Here we go, here we go, here we go. We're gonna take a look at recursion in this video and give you a few simple recursion methods and explore what recursion is. Recursion, the word itself, basically means to repeat the same process over and over and over. So let's take a look at some methods, how this works. And then after we've got the basic idea with some boring methods, we'll actually show you some examples of how this can be useful in your code sometimes. So let's go peek at a method here. The first one I'm going to take a look at is called say hi. Now if you just follow the instructions to say hi, you're going to notice yourself looping forever. So you'll see here it says to print out the word hi and then say hi again. So it calls say hi. Say hi comes up, prints out hi. Calls say hi again. Comes back up, prints hi again. Calls say hi again. You see where this pattern is going on and on and on. Now this particular recursive method, when I actually give it a go here in my runner, so get that class to call say hi, is actually going to do the following. Okay, it causes problems. It says stack overflow error. And the reason it's giving this error is the Java virtual machine is basically sort of running out of memory on something called the stack where it keeps instructions. You're going to notice that for say hi to run, for it to finish, it has to do line 5 and it has to finish line 6. The problem is line 6 never finishes because it calls say hi again, which prints out hi, and calls say hi again. So you have a method added to something called the stack and then that adds another say hi method to the stack, and that adds another say hi method to the stack, and it just keeps going on and on and on forever, and it sort of breaks it, and so you get the errors. Now, if I actually do a little bit of a step between, like minus a number off a number here in the beat method, let's run through this one and see what this one does. So you're going to see here that I'm now going to call beep5 another recursive method. So let's look at this one. Beep 5. Prints out beep 5. Minus is 1. Calls beep 4. Beep 4 comes up. Prints out beep 4. Minus 1. Call beep 3. Now if we actually run this one, we actually get this running a bit. Er, then we get some problems. So I'll just scroll to the top there. And you can see what this one was doing. It actually had the time to do some printouts before problems occurred. And I really honestly can't tell you at this point why this one doesn't print out at least some highs first. But it doesn't. But here you go. You get it counting down and down and down. And in theory it would go forever, but eventually the stack gets full of these beep methods and you know it breaks down. If we had to see this in a little picture form here, it's not the most elegant. But this is important to understanding the ones that are going to be coming up. Beep4 has two lines of instruction. Print out beep and call beep3. Beep3 has two lines of instruction. Print out beep and call beep2. Beep2 has lines of instruction. Call beep, then call beep1. Sorry, print out beep, call beep1. And this just goes forever until you get the overflow. So these are two little simple uh, recursion methods that really don't do much, but warm you up to this idea that you're repeating. A method is calling itself, and it sort of keeps repeating. Now let's get into ones that actually do stop, that don't cause errors. So here I have one called moo. I give it a number, and it prints out moo and x. But this time, I actually have something to possibly stop the recursion. I'm just not going to call moo again. I'm going to ask a question first. If x is still bigger than 0, then we get to call moo again. This is the base case. Eventually, if we keep minusing 1 off x, 3, 2, 1, 0. When x becomes 0, it'll print out moo 0. And if x is bigger than 0, no it's not, so no you don't. 
the recursion has stopped. There's actually an endpoint to this one. So if we actually give this one a quick run, you're going to see that this one will actually stop. And that's what your recursions should have them them, a base case that stops the recursive calls. So let's give this one a run. And you'll see 43210 stop success. Okay, it's all good. Let's take a look at this one visually. Sheet 2 here. Moo 3. Two lines of instruction, right? And just to convince you here, the two lines of instruction are print out Moo 3 and call Moo 2. Now, if you repeat this process, Moo 2 has two lines of instruction. Print out Moo, call Moo 1. Moo 1 has two lines of instruction. Print out Moo, Moo 0. But look what happens when we get to Moo 0. Moo 0 only does this line. Okay, the other line doesn't run. And so that's our base case that ends the madness here. And it just prints out Moo, we're done. So you get Moo, 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 Moo. And that's what we saw in the output. Okay, so the base case, good for stopping a recursion. Let's look at one or two more here that uh, step it up slightly trickier to get your brains working. All right, the next one we're going to take a look at is the count method. Okay, we're going to let you do this one on your own. So here I'm calling count four. So let's go over to the code. And there's the count method. You'll see the base case. As long as I'm bigger than zero, I call the method again with one less. No matter what, afterwards, I print out the number, okay, whatever X was. So take a minute, scrap paper, and try to figure this one out and see if you get the same answer that I get when I run this thing. Okay, take a peek, check your answer here. Let's go for it. Let's run count four. Here's my sketch. And I'm just going to follow the instructions. So count four says... Run count three, then print out four. But I can't print out that four until I finish count three. Count three says print out count two, and then print out a three. But I can't print out count two, or the three until I finish count two. Count two says call count one, then print out a two. Count one says print out, sorry, run count zero, and then print out a one. Count zero is the base case. It finally just does code. Zero. Okay, it does no more recursion. As you can see here, when a zero gets passed in, this code doesn't bother running. You're just actually printing out a value and recursion's all over. So, count zero prints out a zero. That's actually the first thing printed out if you follow down this chain. Now you've done count zero. You can finish off and do the one. Now that you've done these two lines, you just finished count one, which means you can print out the two. Now you finish those two lines, means you finished count two. Now you can print out the three. Now you finish those two lines, that means you just did count three, you can print out the four. And that's zero, one, two, three, four. If I actually check this out in the code here, and let's give this a run in the runner, and zero one two three four so like a backwards starting from zero and counting up to your number but a very odd way to write it but it gets you thinking about how recursion is going to work later on you're going to see routines that actually do useful tasks with recursion not just printing these little numbers out now the last one i'm going to do in this video here is going to maybe be the trickiest one but it'll be the one that shows if you actually sort of really get what you're doing here I got this method pattern, and I'm going to call pattern 3. Once again, pause the video, take a peek at the code, and try to solve pattern 3 based on this code. Okay, you probably took a few minutes, and your brain may have heated up a bit. Uh, don't feel bad if this one messed you up a bit. Uh, students usually have a hard time with this idea, but once again, we're trying to stress just follow the instructions that the computer would be doing. And these instructions are 
print out the value of x. Call the method again with one less, as long as you're above zero, and then print out the value of x. So when I start with pattern three, three comes in, I print out a three, I call pattern two, I print out a three, and this pattern keeps going. So let's take a peek at it here. So pattern three, prints out a three, three, calls pattern two, and when pattern two is all done, then you get to print out the three. So I can't write three here yet. You know this three is gonna end up being way down there somewhere. So let's just follow the instructions. Pattern two, what does it say to do? Well, it says print out a two, so I'll print out a two. It says call pattern one. Okay, let's do it. Pattern one says print out a one. And it says call pattern zero. Okay, let's call pattern zero, which prints out a zero, doesn't do a recursive call, and prints out another zero. So you can probably see where this is going. This was pattern zero, all done. Now I can finish off and print my one out. Now I've just done that, which was pattern one. Now I can print my two out. Now I've done all that. That was pattern two. I can print my three out. It's a nice little sort of number pyramid. Not bad, but if you got that, you're on the right track and you sort of get the idea. However you can sort of sketch this through in your head, it's really good, right? It's difficult to think of this stuff in your head and have it all straight the first time you see it. Now there's one more method we're going to do in another video. These methods had something in common. They were all void. So the next video we're going to show you this one here, which is the return one. Now just so you can actually see the 321, there's the one we just did. Confirms we did it all right. So thanks for watching. Think about these or go over them again. And we'll see in the next video where we do that return value with some recursion.